This is a pretty good projectile question. MJ17 P22 question 2. First part. Of course, definition comes first. Define velocity. Velocity, you need to remember, is a rate of change of displacement. So actually, the best answer you can give here is to say that this is the rate of change of displacement. Sometimes, the mark scheme will allow displacement over time Displacement per unit time, but those are very dangerous answers because sometimes they may reject it as well. So stay safe, play safe. Rate of change of displacement. Eh, no S, just displacement. This one is going to be a B1 mark. Then we come to the projectile question. A ball of 0.45 kg leaves the table with the edge, edge of a table with horizontal velocity. So you're going to roll off. Whoop, pop. The height of table is 1, 1.25 1 and the ball travels 1.5 before it hits the floor. Air resistance is negligible. No need to worry about weird things. We can use our Stova equations if air resistance is negligible. So we need to calculate first the horizontal velocity of the ball as it leaves the table. Before we go to the calculation or figure out what equation to use, of, stare carefully at this scenario. Think of some facts. Label the data. So 1.25 meters, that is really going to be our vertical displacement. 1.5 is known as our range, the furthest we can go. And this is S of X, horizontal displacement. Then the last thing is initial condition. There is horizontal, there is vertical. Is there vertical? Ah? No vertical velocity at the beginning. You see this thing perfectly horizontal ma, horizontal anyway got vertical, no, 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 no. So this horizontal is just going to be V, which is the speed at that point, no vertical. With this in mind, now we go and see what Stuva equation shall we use to solve this thing. We want to find horizontal velocity V. Maybe we, if you're not sure how to start, let's list out all the information we know for the horizontal as well as the vertical. It might help us here in this question. So horizontal. Stuva, S-T-U-V-A. But horizontal also, all this must add X. Time is not a vector, so we don't need to add the X. Horizontal displacement, 1.5. Time, we don't know. We don't know the time at this point. Initial, yes, we do know the initial. It's going to be our, our, our V here. But we don't know why it is at the point, so we are trying to find this. If we can find ux, we can find our v. vx, we don't know either, blank. Acceleration, we do know, is zero. Ooh, mm, that can be used. Okay, anyway, let's also list the, 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 the vertical component. S-T-U-V-A, stuva, but for vertical, 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 and vertical. Vert vertical displacement is 1.25. Time, we don't know. Initial velocity, don't have, zero. Should add my units, huh? Final, we don't know. Acceleration, oh, we do know acceleration. This is 9.81 meters per second square. Okay, so it looks like we have SUA, SUA. Um, let's start with one that it goes... S equals to UT plus half AT squared as our main equation. Let's start off with the horizontal first. Because I think we have enough information to do that. S equals to UT plus half AT squared. And then don't forget this is all for horizontal. So acceleration, there's no horizontal acceleration. So this whole term is zero. That leaves us with s of x which is given to us what was the value again 1.5 right yeah 1.5 i'm going to zoom out so we can see the whole thing a little clearer so one wait 1.5 equals to v which we need to find times time oh we don't know time we don't have enough information we need one more information so if we can find what time is ooh. The time here and the time here is the same. I think we need to do a side calculation. We need to find what is the time first with the vertical. Because now the vertical have 
S T U A. Perfect. Okay, we can find information already. So side note, we need to find the time first. Okay, so we do the vertical. S equals to U T plus half A T squared. Scroll a little lower. Then it's all for vertical. So we need to find a time. We plug in all the values. 1.25 equals to 0. Beautiful. Gone. Plus half. 9.81 times t squared. Yeah, this is how we can find our time right here. Uh, also, uh, since we mentioned a lot how you must define your direction, I'm going to say anything that moves to the right and anything that moves downwards is positive. So all the vectors... Um, it's all downwards, right? So positive, positive, positive. Yeah, so no negative sign here. Don't worry. So with this, we should be able to find a time. If you press calculator, you'll get a time value of 0 0.5. Or if you write the whole thing, 0 0.5048 seconds. That's how we find a time. Okay, very good. We can substitute the time inside here already. Yay. So here we can put 0 0.5048 and get a velocity of 2.971. That's good. Okay. So we round off to 2SF, the answer. 2 or 3SF, okay lah. Okay lah, we can do 2 or 3SF, it's fine. This can be 2.97 or 3.0. I'm fine with both. So where does the 3 marks come from? The first one comes from you using the S equals to UT plus half AT square equation. Then... You need to do your vertical thing to find 0 0.5. This is one mark. And lastly, of course, you substitute in. And you get the correct answer. That's one mark. So you see how you need to use both parts, you know. You need to use the horizontal. Because we need to find that. But we also must use the vertical to find more information that we need. Time links both. There are other equations you could use, but... Hmm... I won't show them all, okay? As long as you have, a, you have something that can give you time, you're good to go. Okay, so this first part is done. Let's move on to the next. So now you need to find the velocity just as the ball will hit the floor. Now this velocity, uh, did they say horizontal or vertical? They didn't say anything. So what this means is probably the vector velocity, which includes both horizontal and vertical. Let's go back to the diagram once again and see where does it hit the floor. So stare carefully at the diagram. You notice at the point where the, the path touches the floor, there will be a velocity. And let's draw the vector. It kind of looks like this. This is how the velocity will look like. Of course, you can bring in the components. Horizontal, vertical. So let's redraw that little, little velocity arrow there. The moment where you hit the floor on this side. There's our floor and there is our vector as it hits. Okay, so this is what we call vector V. Then we have the components, horizontal and right angle to it is the vertical component. At this point, we should have a Vx and a Vy. If we can find Vx and Vy, we can find the V. But wait a second. Vx we know from before Vx is the same as Ux, the horizontal speed never changed. So it's still 3 or 2.97 meters per second, the value that we found just now. Vertical though, uh, this one we don't know. So we need to do another Stuva equation to see, okay, how can we find the V? So back to this, I'm going to fill in the blanks. We know this is 0 0.5, we know this is 0 0.5. Now the next thing we want to find is ah, this highlighted one here. What is V? So much info to use. I think this time I will use... I don't want to use a T, because in case my T value I calculate wrong, or then I might get something wrong. So I'm going to use SUVA. These are the four values that I have, and that will, that will, will serve well to fill an equation. V squared equals to U squared plus 2AS. Let's write it out. V squared, U squared plus 2AS. In the vertical, uh, so this one all Y. VY, UY, AY, SY. I write this out so I remember. Don't simply, simply, accidentally plug in some value. Okay, 
So let's go. Plug in. Um, there is no initial velocity. So this is zero. There is two times. This one is 9.81 in the positive. I define it to be so. And SY. How far do we travel vertically downwards when we go like this? Boop, 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 Hit the floor. This part. So that's going to be 1.25 in height. I think I draw like this. La. Ooh, a bit curvy. 1.25. So 9.1 times 1.25. And this is going to be VY squared. Oh, I want to find VY. So I square root this whole thing. Okay, so this should give me a calculator. A value of 4.952. 952 meters per second. Very good, we have found the answer here. But we are not done. Because what they want is the magnitude of velocity. They want the V, not the component. So you have to combine both components together. Firstly, we are going to do that with Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so Pythagoras theorem goes like this. V equals to Vx squared plus Vy squared. Because X and Y here are both part of a right angle triangle, right? You want to find hypothesis? So we square lah. So we square. 2.97 square plus 4.95 square. Mark scheme will probably keep a f uh, lesser SF, but I like to keep more. Uh, so this one, if I use this, will give me 5.77 meters per second thereabouts. Your values might a bit be a bit different if you use 3.0 and 5.0. It's okay as long as you show you're working. Should be around six. So magnitude of velocity, yes, we have found that this should be about five point eight, somewhere there, somewhere right here, five point eight. Angle to the horizontal will be something else that we need to find. Let's see where's the angle to horizontal? Either this angle theta, or this angle theta. I think I'm gonna use the theta up here. I'm gonna highlight in green. So based on that, we have values opposite and adjacent. So based on tangent theta, the opposite is Vy, adjacent is Vx. <laughs> so theta here is going to be arc tangent. Vy is what? 4.95 over Vx, which is 2.97. What do we get? Looks like 59.0. 9.0 degrees. So this is our angle, 59.0 degrees. Hey, I already got degree right, not to write degree lah. So this question got quite a lot of marks oh. Four marks. The first one is if your answer is correct, you reach the end. And also your angle is correct at the end. The other two marks comes from your working. The first one is if you use Pythagoras theorem. So that will be your, your, your square 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 root here. This is for Pythagoras. To combine both components together. And the other one comes from actually using the V square U square 2AS. This one is another working to find 4.9. So I will highly recommend for questions like this, velocity as it hits the floor. It's finding it hard to understand what's happening. Draw a picture. No? Picture like this. You zoom in at the end of the path, which is down here. And you see what happened when you are just hitting the floor. How are the velocity like? Let's move on to the next one. Kinetic energy S, it hits the floor. Okay, so we already know here you have a speed or velocity of 5.8. That is the one we're going to use for our speed calculation here. So kinetic energy, Ke, equals to half mv square. And the V is going to the magnitude at that point. So we're going to sub in half m. Okay, here you have a choice. The mark scheme will sub in 5.8. Which is like, miss, but he's already rounded off. I'm just telling you, they sub in 5.8, but you can sub in 5.77 as well. Also, let's might as well sub in everything now, lah, one shot. The mass they give to us is the in the previous part. You can scroll back and see if you have the question with you. Then here, you can either choose 5.8 or 5.77. Let's, let's do 5.8. Okay, I'm going to make a note here. Or 5.77 is okay as long as you show you're working. If you use 5.8, the rounded value, you, I mean, the 2 SF value, you should get 7.57 .7 and round off to 7.6 if you choose 2 SF. It's okay if you use 5.77 .7 and you get different values like 7.3 or 
These are the accepted values also. The mark scheme will use, I think, 5.8. So one mark is for final answer. And one mark is, oh, did you know half mv square is an equation? We'll learn more about this in the energy chapter as well. But we can remember a bit from your previous school, half mv square is kinetic energy, okay? Uh, so kinetic energy is changing. Gravitational potential energy is the other thing that we need to calculate. So what is the loss in GPE as it falls from table to the floor? So imagine there's a table up here. It goes boop down. There's a change in height of 1.25 meter. So we're going to sub that in as our uh, change in energy. So change in GPE. It says with a change in MGH. But usually only height is changing. So we say MG and change in height. So let's sub in all the values of 1.25 meter change in height. This will be 0 0.45 kg. Ah. G is 9.81, change in height 1.25 meters. Okay, so with this we should get 5.518. And if you choose to round off to 2SF, then this will be 5.5 joules. So you have two marks, oh, not bad. First mark is for final answer. And then one for your MGH equation over here. Very generous. Sometimes they want correct value substitute only. Get mark. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the last part. So you got a kinetic energy when you hit the floor. And a loss in GPE as it falls from table to the floor. Explain why this kinetic energy that we just calculated does not equal to the loss of GPE which is 5.5. .5. Why are these two values not the same? Hmm. Think back carefully of the whole path of the projectile. You start here and you drop down. So as you have a change in height, this will be a change in GPE. Okay. And this is corresponding to the change in KE. You have an initial kinetic energy. Don't know what that is. It's some non-zero value. Uh, got some number. Because moving, uh, you're moving this way horizontal. And down at the end, you have some final kinetic energy, which is what we calculated, 7.5. So if GPE here is going to be 5.5, the change, of course, cannot be final. La. How can this one be the same? So the change in GPE is not the final kinetic energy. But... The change in GPE uh, is equal to the change in KE. This one, yes, can. So the kinetic energy of the ball we found here just now is final kinetic energy. It cannot be the same. It's not the same thing. So we can say the ball actually have start already some KE in the beginning. The ball, ball has kinetic energy at the start. It's not zero. And this is why due to the horizontal velocity. Horizontal velocity, which is constant throughout the whole journey. Okay, so if you, can, you are talk about this point, that's going to be 1v1 one one mark there. Lah, okay, so remember, uh, be careful. This one cannot. Because your beginning here already got kinetic energy. But if you talk about change, uh, then change is allowed. The change of GPE equals a change in KE. Okay, so that's all for this question. A good summary of how to practice your Stuva equations and think of energy. But I'll see you in the next video.